this video is a short video made in order to show you how to find the entranceway to the written works of Edward Leedskownen using an M3 Enigma machine. My name is Jason Oakes and I call myself Poughkeepsie Blue. Uh, in order to get into Ed Leedskownen's works using an M3 Enigma machine, you're going to need to know a few things about an Enigma machine. Uh, I learned, I found these settings myself using a few clues from this book, How to Read His Writings, The Unauthorized Guide to Decoding Edward Leedskownen's Works. Uh, it's written by Edward Marlinsky, and I used some of the clues that I found in this book in order to find these Enigma machine settings. This book shows you how to use an Enigma machine, and it also shows you how Ed Leedskownen used an Enigma machine. Uh, he used the input, the output, and the reflector, which I'll go over in a moment. Uh, this book is written in clues. It's very hard to read, but when you do learn how to read it, it is worth its weight in gold and will open up a whole new world for you into reading Ed Leedskownen's works. I highly recommend buying this book and I highly recommend learning a little bit about an Enigma machine before you attempt this. Uh, it's an interesting, interesting machine and it's very interesting the way Ed used it in his writings. Um, I uh, credit myself for finding these settings, although the settings can be found in Edward Marlinsky's book. They uh, are actually very very well hidden. They're hard to find. Um, I found that after I discovered the Enigma machine settings by myself. So I credit myself for finding them using clues from Edward Marlinsky's book. I still recommend buying it though because it is highly informative and can tell you so much more about Ed Leedscon than I ever can. Before we start, you're going to need three important things. Uh, you're going to need, at minimum, three important things. Well, two at minimum. One is very handy to have. Uh, the first important thing that you're going to need is a copy of the written works of Edward Leedskownen. This is what they look like when you get them from Coral Castle. This one is still unopened. It's wrapped in plastic. It still has a stamp sticker on the back. I'm not going to use that one because I like that one. But I happen to have a set right here of all Edward Leeds Gunman's works. It's five books when you open them up. A book in every home, magnetic current, uh, magnetic base, sound base, uh, mineral, vegetable, and animal life. Magnet, yeah, okay. And uh, a copy of this advertisement. So, we're going to actually be using magnetic current because magnetic current is where to find these settings. Uh, I'll show you in a moment. The uh, second important thing that you're going to need, I highly recommend having, is uh, your wit. If you don't have enough wit to do this, to solve its riddles, it can get entirely frustrating. And I also recommend patience. Uh, I'm about to show you is uh, Ed's quiz garden, his riddle garden. He gives us uh, questions to answer, riddles to answer, and when you put in the correct answer, you get another riddle. I've gotten about 80 punches into Enigma Machine into it, and I don't believe I'm at the end yet. But I wanted to share with everybody, because the chances of me getting 80 punches are one in millions, and I'm still getting readable messages from Ed. Um, the third thing that you're going to need that's very important to have is an Enigma Machine. If you don't happen to have an Enigma machine, I recommend that you do an internet search on Universal Enigma Simulator. It's uh, a program that you don't download, you use it on the net. I use it uh, for the M3 machine. It's very easy to use, it's very true to the Enigma machine, and it has an option where you can show the monitor on the inside, which will show you the uh, path that the letters take through the machine through the reflector rotor and back out, which is important because Edward Leedskonen uses the reflector rotor uh, in his works. So, um, before I start, I am also going to recommend that if you're into Edward Leedskonen and you're into reading his works and you want to know more about him, I would uh, 
some good websites out there about Ed. Um, most of them are speculation. Some of them have to do with uh, Ed's magnetic theories, um, his uh, symbols on the cover of his book, uh, the numbers he carved on his door. A lot of them are speculation, but what I'm about to show you, I uh, will show you, I'll actually show you Ed's, Ed's words um, that nobody has seen or I haven't shown anyone in a long time. Uh, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Another thing I would highly recommend is a couple books. The first one I would recommend is Coral Castle by Rusty McClure and Jack Heffron. That's a really good book about Ed. It's facts based on facts and um, I would recommend it. Uh, it holds a little bit of information on Ed that you might not know, um, but it also is trustable. It's based on you know research done about Ed and not speculation or hearsay. Uh, another interesting book, if you're interested in Ed, is Corrado Pius, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's kind of hard to find. Um, I don't read Latvian, so I can't actually understand it, but it's full of great pictures, and I really enjoy that. Um, but it's got some interesting things in it that you wouldn't normally see anywhere else. So, if you can get a copy, go for it. So... In order to find the entrance to Ed Leeds Gowman's works, well, what I believe is the entrance, you're going to need to get your copy of Magnetic Current, and we'll open it up to page three, which is where the book starts. And uh, the clue that I learned from Edward Marlinsky, which is actually fairly visible, is Magnetic Current, the two R's in current, uh, are not identical. The first R is a P with the line drawn in it, and the second R is actually an R, uh, if you look very closely. So that is your first clue, and it's the, one of the most important clues because if you read it correctly, I'll show you. We're going to read that it actually says magnetic cup rent. Well, that doesn't exactly sound correct, so instead we're going to break that apart and we're going to take cup red and we're going to look at it as C up red. Uh, I'm not going to go too much detail about an Enigma machine. I'm going to let you know that I found these settings because I recognized a few things in the Enigma machine. Um, the C, the U, the R. Um, most importantly, uh, if you know anything about an Enigma machine, if you don't, uh, a brief lesson is that it has different settings. The first would be the Wazen Luge setting, which is uh, five discs in an M3 machine. It would be five rings, um, one through five, uh, but it would actually be three of them. So any numbers, one through five, in succession of three. The second would be the ring stallone, which would be another three letters A through Z. So any letters A through Z. Um, and some machines uh, that's interpreted as numbers, 1 through 26, but uh, you just use the corresponding numbers for letters. Uh, the third thing that would be important is the U. Uh, that would be the Umzeckerweld, or the reflector, which is the fourth rotor in the machine uh, on an M3, and that's either going to be a B or a C, and that was the reason why I found the C in CU so important, CU. Um, the third's going to be the Grenstelon, which is uh, another three letters found on the front of the machine, A through Z. And the last one was going to be the Stecker Brett, which is actually plug wires, A through Z. There's five of them crossed with A through Z. So you get any combination of uh, A crossed with Z, you'll get A crossed with B, you'll get A crossed with uh, M. It doesn't matter, uh, but you'll get five pairs, uh, I believe, on an M3. That's what I've found in Edgeworks so far. So knowing these settings on an Enigma machine, you can look at see up rent and see that the R happens to have 1, 2, 3. And I showed you 1, 2, 3. So, you know, you've already got two settings for an Enigma machine right here. Now this was kind of suspect to me, so I looked around in Ed's book 
magnetic current and I found and if you look on page 17 the only word if you follow his clue that says C up rent the only instance that the word rent appears in the book is right here on page 17 and if you see up for a moment you will notice that it says wise lengthwise lengthwise hmm three things that's very suspect but what if Ed meant C up and find rent so let's see what's below rent and if you look down here you'll find N I N G I N G I N G it's also very suspect uh, if you put all these together you've actually found the settings for an Enigma machine and I'm going to show you right now how to interpret those the first thing you're going to want to look at is wise. That's very interesting. Wise. It says lengthwise, lengthwise, and wise, but we don't need lengthwise right away. We just need wise. Now, if we break this word up like we did with C up right, we will find that W is E. Well, that's kind of suspect because remember how I told you the Stecker breath setting. And by the way, I mispronounced the German names because I like comedy. The Stucker Brett setting is any letter crossed with another letter. So, W crossed with E. W is E. So that, actually, I'm going to give it up right now. That is a Stucker Brett setting that you'll start with. So, another way we can look at Y's is kind of interesting. Well, that's got the W for the Wazenuge setting, which would be three numbers. Well, my numbers don't look, my letters kind of look like numbers, if you see my handwriting's kind of sloppy here. So it almost looks like W15E. So, 15E doesn't necessarily make sense, but if you know anything about the Bible or Ed, you'll know that the number 153 does make sense. And if you take a W and you turn it sideways, you'll get what resembles an E. And if you take that E and you spin it one more time, you'll get what resembles an M. And if you spin it one more time, you'll get what resembles a 3. And then you can get it back to a W again. Mu 3. So, maybe, just maybe, Ed hit the Wazenuge setting right here. 1, 5, 3. Hmm, that's very interesting as well. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the letter W is the 23rd letter of the English alphabet, and that the letter E is the 5th letter of the English alphabet. Of course, 2 plus 3 is 5, so W is E if you take the value of W and the value of E. They are basically the same. So, that's very interesting. Now, if you've been keeping track, we've so far sound, found a Steckerbrett setting, we've found a Wazenluge setting, we've found a Ringstelung setting. I think we've also found the reflector setting, as C. So, uh, there'd be one more left to find, and that would be the Grinstelung setting. But if we're paying attention to what we found earlier in magnetic current, you'll remember that we had N. I and J. Well, let's break this one apart again like we did before. N in J. If G is your Grunstelung setting. So, N in G would be N in A. Huh. So as simple as pi, listening to the clues and looking at what Ed wrote and using our wit, we found the settings to an M3 naming machine. W153 R E N T U C G N N N and the stecker breath W E or W crossed with E. Wow. How incredible. How, how easy was that? Well, 
I don't happen to have an Enigma machine handy, so once you have these settings and you set up an Enigma machine, what do you do with them? What do you punch in next? Well, it's not exactly easy, but if you take the letters from page 17, which is where we were, 1, 7, the corresponding letters that go with them would be A and G. Which is kind of interesting because Ed was in love with a woman named Agnes. Well, I'm going to tell you where to go next. I don't happen to have an Enigma machine handy, nor do I have a computer program handy, but I do know what the settings will get you if you type in with those settings into an M3 Enigma machine the letters A and G. That would be the input that you put into the machine. Your output is going to be the C. <laughs> so, A, G, easy. Right there you'll find Ed's words. And if anybody doesn't think those are Ed's words, the chances of finding a readable message in Enigma machine are about 1 in 100,000. What's even more interesting is, as you punch in the letter A, if you look on the show monitor, if you're using the Universal Enigma machine, you'll find that the reflector setting, or the U, after it comes, if you're using the Universal Enigma simulator, you'll find that there's a red arrow inside the bottom, over, over the bottom line. The red arrow is the letter you'd be looking for. That's the number that comes out, or the letter that comes out of the reflector. In this case, if you were to punch in the letter A, the number, the letter, I'm sorry, that goes through the reflector would be M. So, if you were reading it this way, as you punched it in, you would punch in A, and you would get me. Another message from Ed. Well, it also says G-A-M-E, game, <laughs> easy. That's interesting. Well, the real interesting thing is if you punch in the G and you look at the reflector, you'll get the letter Q. And reading down, it will say quiz. Me. Quiz. Game. A G. Make. Easy. <laughs> And those are Ed's words. If you have seen them, if you have read them, but I've shown them to you, and if you use an Enigma machine with the right settings, you'll find them as well. And if you continue with Ed's quiz and play Ed's game, you'll figure out what the next two letters to punch in are. It's not that hard. And during this process, Ed will also show you how and where to switch the stucker butts. So you start out with the M at E. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> w E would be your stucker butt setting. And will give you more as you go. And Ed will show you for a total of five swaps. Starting with the W E. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you've gotten a little more interested. I'm not showing you something speculative because the chances of finding this in a new machine are, are highly slim to none. Uh, if anybody would like to care to try, uh, if I consider A and G two punches into an Enigma machine, I am 80 punches into Ed's quiz game before I finally uh, got a little stumped. They're very real messages, they're very real riddles, and they are beautiful. Ed's work is beautiful. I believe, you know, this is my speculation, I believe that Ed knew everything about an Enigma machine. Because he worked at Bletchley Park. So, I would recommend following Ed's trail. If this is what Ed wants you to know, Ed can teach you more. And Ed will teach you how to read his writings. And Ed will teach you how to go about learning what he wrote. My name is Poughkeepsie Blue. Good luck.